the door, then you're going to go up in flames at any minute. The damn! God's sake! Oh, the window! Does the window still work? The window, come on! Come on, come on, out! Come on, out! Brian! Now, come on, lift your legs. Lift your legs up! Come on, with me! Go! Go on! Come on! Go! Run away! Hey! Come on! Oh! Come on, you are okay! Oh. No, call the fire brigade then get you an ambulance. I don't want to go to a bleed in the hospital. Look, sir, I'm a police officer and I think. <clears throat> oh! Oh! Well, strictly speaking, it is the Federation, that fact. Yeah, well, that may well be, but it doesn't make the prospect any more appealing. Who really wants to run it past you? I mean, not make you part of the survey. Well, why not? I suppose he thinks anybody above Sarge is about to retire anyway, doesn't he? Anyway, look, tell him to give it to Marion and I'll have to it. Yeah, well, look on the bright side. Eh? Hey? Well, I mean, your stress level must be in good shape. You haven't got to suffer Reg Ollis, have you? <laughs> uh, seen Ted Roach. No, he went out about half an hour ago. Warehouse job. Give him a message, will you? Tell him I want a word. Yes, sir. Good lad. How do you rate being taken hostage by terrorists? Nah. Delivering messages of death? Look, that ain't stress, is it? I mean, stress is things that happen all the time. Not right, Numa. Is it? Except in bribes. And look, I'll give you a little bit of stress if you don't watch it. I'm in a complaint made against you. Being caught making a mistake. Tasty crumpet on the wrong side of the counter. I shall put you down with thwarted ambition, Peter. Yes, love? Can I speak to a female officer, please? Why? What's wrong with me? I've just been raped. TLB585S, 10 to 1, it's stolen. Never mind the car, you ought to go to casualty. No, I haven't got time to go to casualty time. I'm late enough as it is, and I'm Miss Parade. Well, don't come running to me if you die later. You tell anyone else who'd been assaulted. Look, will you stop fussing? TLB585S, yes? Yes, ma'am. What's up with her? No, oh, nothing. She just risked horrible death hauling a guy from a burning car and got thumped for a trouble. Accommodation's no use if you're half uh, dead. Ah, PTSD. What? PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. I haven't got one of those yet. Well, other than you, of course, son. Me? Yeah, that's what you're wounding at. You're my prime example. It's me, uh, stress survey. I do not suffer from stress, Hollis. I'm a yogi. All I suffer from is an aching gut and the proximity of the collator's room. Oh, excuse me, ma'am. I've got a girl at the front desk. Reckon she's been raped. Uh, where shall I...? In here, I suppose. Round up a WPC and inform CID. Yes, ma'am. And uh, just give me one minute to get my uniform on. Yes, ma'am. And then they jumped on the bike and drove off, did they, Mrs. Painter? In the end, yeah. In a ride two and eight, they were. I pushed the bike over as well, see? That's the thing to do. You want to tell people, push the bike over. That gives the little SOD something to think about. I don't suppose in amongst all this excitement you managed to get the number of the bike, did you? No, I was too busy hitting them. <laughs> Not to worry. The descriptions are very good. Little SODs. Now, what I'm going to do is just ask you a few brief questions and then arrange for you to go to our new rape centre across the river. Why? What for? Well, we have these new centres now. They make the whole procedure less of an ordeal and they're much pleasanter than police stations. I haven't got time for all that. I'm on duty this afternoon. Can't I be examined here? I am a nurse. Give me a hard time, are they, love? This is Mrs. Painter, Gov. The motorbike muggers are active again. Yeah? Where's her crash helmet? She's a witness. Ah, oh, well, like the others. Little SODs. They don't frighten me. No. No, not like the others. Really good description of the villains and a good description of the bike. It all fits the pattern perfectly. Look. She was done here, in Felmery Road. Now, when they've worked this area of a morning, they've always gone down this way the same afternoon. You can see patterns in plain wallpaper, Michael. Yeah, well, as they didn't score this morning, I think they're doubly likely to try again. I reckon we should call in Trafpol and go for it. Trafpol? Well, they said they'll loan us a couple of bikes. What, at ten minutes' notice? You said the governor was a pal of yours. Oh, yeah. Yeah, all right, I'll give him a bell. 
Got to be better for his lads than checking the tail lights on juggernauts. All right, then, Lou. Could you just let us come with me now? Okay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Come on, take it easy. 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 Interviewed in this cheery hole, taken through the custody areas we leered at, then examined in the surgeon's room like some criminal. Well, if she doesn't like our posh new nerve centre, that's down to her. Is she genuine? Yes, I say she's genuine. Good. You still on red alert for the motorbike muggers? Might be cotton. No. But Dashwood thinks we might be in with a shout. We could do with a bit of moral support on this relief in the Beagley Road area. A decoy would be nice. Traffic will be there on their mopeds. You all right, Chrissy? Yeah, fine. You can borrow June Upland. Well, I'm not sure there's anything in it, sir. So far, it's just rumour. You think a policeman's life is complicated enough, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, well, you know Ted Roach, sir. If it moves, you mean? Yeah, well, that's one way of putting it. Yes. One thing we never seem to get right in the force, isn't it? Women. Mm. I mean, what's he thinking of? Christine Fraser. Surely a woman like that wouldn't... Well, my thoughts exactly, sir. And if you ask me, it's not the lady herself he's interested in. It's the rank. Yeah, it's probably very true, Derek. Well, they both know the rules. Anything like that at this station and one of them's out. Yes, sir. Well, I've got Roach to you to see me as soon as he gets in. Right. Well, I'll leave it with you, then. I've got no idea what you say to Christine. Well, she's on the force. Shouldn't be any different, should it? Hey, you all right, love? Look, I'm talking to you. Are you OK? Yeah. You been drinking? I don't drink. Been it smells drinking? as if you do. Look, I don't drink, all right. I just had too much cough medicine for me cold. Yeah, well, look, I think we'd better get you home. Where do you live? None of your bloody business. Look, I'm only trying to help. You're going to have that baby in the road look, in a minute. Nuts. Off, will you? I'm waiting for someone. Who? Ron. Who's he, your husband? Oh, leave it out. Will you just nap off? <sighs> All right, give me Six, my baby. 643 to Sierra Oscar receiving over. Just let go of my body, will you? Minute, will you? Yeah, can I have some transport, please, in Conroy Street? Look, what have I done wrong? Wouldn't you get going, my buggy? Inspector Fraser wants to see you anyway. What for? You say you're a student nurse, Maria? Yes. And you're certain that you've never seen this man before? I mean, you work in a busy hospital. A lot of people passing through. I told you no. And you weren't aware of anyone following you? Not until it happened. Right. Look, I'm sorry to have to put you through this. But it is important to get these things straight while they're still fresh in your mind. Now, I don't want to keep you here all day ploughing through photographs. So I want you to think very hard, Maria. I know it's difficult, but is there anything that you can remember about this man that you haven't already told us? His nose, maybe. I think one of his nostrils was a little bit bigger than the other one. As though he'd had an accident or something when he was young. <laughs> Drunk in charge of a baby, Mum. Well, you shouldn't have been on duty, should you, Sam? Uh, you want to see me, Mum? Yeah, quick as you can with that. So I'm giving you to CID for a couple of hours decoy duty. Liaise with DC Dashwood. Now, the picture that's emerging is that your job content stressors cause more stress than your job context stressors. In other words... It's a load of old fanny. <laughs> in other words, stress is basically down to poor management. Now, that's true. Fraser's been giving me some right grief about my compensatory leave, and I'm sure I'm right. Here, I want you to have a word... Got that the... slag! Stephen Moat. Born July 65. Outpatient at the Royal. Previous convictions for sexual assault. 
Last known address, 12B Sutcliffe House. Ah, uh, no, he's moved up from there. What? Where to? Well, I don't know. What do you mean, you don't know? You're supposed to be the collator, aren't you? Yeah, but they don't give me change of address codes, sir. Well, I had to rely on the lads on the beat for that sort of information. Well, the hospital must know. Come on. Uh, should we check it out with the girl first, Gough? Yeah. What's the problem? Are we charging her or just keeping her safe while she sobers up? Well, that's what I thought I'd better ask you, mate. Why? You're the arresting officer. Can't you and the custody officer sort it out between you? Where's the lady? Oh, but he's Are we checking the woman's background? Yes, ma'am. So CID can expect you shortly? Yes, ma'am. Good. She's definite. I'm going up to the hospital. Will you take this baby? I'm missing out on the motorbikes. You and me both, mate. Give it to me. Hey, cheers, mate. But we're not having kids. <laughs> Yes, sir. DC Lines. Sorry to trouble you over this, Mr. Gascoigne. I wouldn't normally bother, but your receptionist seemed to think it uh, was... If you're looking for information about one of our patients, she was quite right. Yes, well, I'm just after a home address. Of? Stephen Anthony Moat. He's an outpatient here, I believe. And you want to see him in connection with what, exactly? I have reason to believe he may have committed a rape this morning on a student nurse in Leithorpe Park. She identified Stephen? By description and from a photograph. I see. Well, if you can give me a couple of hours, Inspector, I'll see if we can help her. Couple of hours? To look up an address? I'm afraid it's not our policy to disclose personal details of our patients or staff without proper consultation. We are discussing rape. The more serious the allegation, the more important that we get it right. This is a psychiatric hospital. Our patients have enough problems without being hounded by the authorities. Now, just a minute, sir. I'm not hounding anyone. I am pursuing inquiries. And I have good reason for wishing to speak to Mr. Moat. So I'd be very grateful for your cooperation. Now. I'm sorry. I must discuss it with my case team first. Then I'll talk to you again. Phone me in a couple of hours. Thanks, Sarge. <coughs> How you feeling, Mr. Jervis? Where's my D? He's outside. He's OK. Would you like another cup of coffee? Look, what we're doing, Mrs. Jervis, is we're checking that everything's OK at home. Now, that is the right address you gave us, isn't it? Oh. Ten minutes in house. Right. Oh. Ron was going to take us to Greenwich this afternoon. But Ron's your boyfriend, is he? Met him in a pub. I thought you said you hadn't been in a pub. Oh, not today, I haven't. It's this poxy med... Well, look, we need to know if there's anybody who can... <laughs> oh, Tosh! If you tell me one more time to calm down, I swear to God, I'll make sure your family ends at five. What have we lost, Gov? Eight, two hours is nothing. We've struck dead looking with that ID. Normally it takes twice as long. Will you shut up being reasonable? I mean, a nurse gets raped and the hospital's not even interested. Nasty, noisy policeman. Take no notice of him. What are you doing in there? Oh, sir, I was looking for you. Stress survey, is it? No, no, I've got an address for you. Stephen Moat. Yeah. Oh, I did a bit of phoning around on the old collators network. Word has it he's sharing a flat with a guy in Gainey Street, number 81. Only Beth look. Brilliant. Up yours, Mr. Gascoigne. Come on, Tosh. All right, mate. Say again, Sierra Oscar. Can be. Yeah. yeah, I've got that, Sarge. Look, can't somebody else go? I'm supposed because to be on this... Because you're nearest. Rendezvous with CID at the junction with Macau Road in five minutes. We've got a sighting. Uh, sit down, Ted. Oh, well, actually, I wanted to speak to you, sir. It's about yeah, some well, overtime. Well, I can wait. Inspector Fraser. What about her? Well, the long and the short of it is, whatever's going on between you and her has just been stopped. You what? Come on, Ted. You know the score. End the message. Oh, no, it is not. Where did you get all this? 
Well, put it this way, your colleagues aren't quite as discreet as you thought. I'll have whoever said... And neither are you. Come on, Ted. Furtive meetings in the corridor, hanging around outside her office. That is nothing to do with you or anyone else. Don't make this any more difficult than it already is. I don't care what's going on. I just want it to stop. There is nothing going on, sir. Good. Let's keep it that way, then, shall we? Sir? Because if you don't... It's you that's going to get moved on, not Christine Fraser. That's all, Sergeant. All units from Sierra Oscar 6, they've just passed Fluin Gardens, heading north along Cellar Road. Anyone know where Ackland uh, is? Sierra Oscar 6 from Mobile 1. In Nelwood Road, over. With a bit of luck, this could be it. Have you seen Fraser? Uh, in the cellar. Oh, Ted, you got a moment? Obviously not. Mum. Oh, can it wait? Ted, no, it please. can't. For God's sake, look, I don't actually need. Neither do I. What is it? What are you trying to do to me, eh? A couple of drinks? A night out? Is that so much to write home about? No, it's not. Look, Ted... Well, it's hot news around here, and it didn't come from me. Oh, great. Yes, isn't it? You don't actually think I said anything, do you? Oh, grow up. Look, Christine, I thought that we had an understanding. No, we didn't. Oh, come on, we both know that that's not true. No, Ted, we don't. I went out with you twice, and it was a mistake I'm not making again. I've already told you to forget it. As I said before, I prefer to keep things on a proper footing. Thanks a bunch, Mom. Sorry to trouble you, sir. Detective Inspector Burnside, Sun Hill Police. I was hoping to speak to Mr. Moat. You've missed him, he's just gone out. Where? I don't know. Don't mind if we come in, do you, sir? Mr. Uh... Stocks. I told you he's not here. When do you expect him back? Tomorrow, next week, never. He took a few things. What? You mean he's gone, gone? I had a phone call ten minutes ago and just went. Who phoned him? I didn't ask. Well, let him need his own knife, right? That's what he needs. Have you Ooh. spoken to Fraser yet? What? About my leave. Ah, your maternity leave? Ah, don't worry, Rob, mate. I shall sort her out. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. Very funny. Oh, Inspector, it's been agreed on. I've been to the address. He's gone. I'm going to have you for conspiracy to pervert the course of justice. I'm sorry about this. I'll call you back. Someone, Mr Gascoigne, tipped him off. Someone here, in this hospital. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Though I don't see how you could possibly prove it. Well, for a start, I'll have a list of everybody who knew about it. And don't give me any of that old fanny about the confidential relationship between medics and their patients, because it won't wash. Well, you could end up interviewing the entire staff. You yourself told the receptionist, I believe. In any case, is anyone going to own up? I don't condone it, of course, but if someone here did tell Stephen to run away, I'd assume it was done for the best motives. Yes. 
Because they knew he was guilty. No, more likely because they knew he wasn't, but that he wouldn't be able to stand up to the likes of you. Nickum and Binham. That's how it goes, isn't it, Inspector? It was probably my fault. Should have left it to Trafpole. Well, some you win, some you lose. I wouldn't trust that lot on their own anyway. June Ackland's gonna love me. Well, then you're just gonna have to find yourself another decoy. Well, it shouldn't be too difficult to persuade someone else out of uniform. All right, Ted. Which one of you scumbags was it? It was what? You know what I'm talking about, Mike. You've lost me, Ted. Christine Fraser. Oh, leave it out. What you do in your spare time is your business. Yes, it is my business. You decide to make it yours and Conway's. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What do you know about it? He doesn't know anything, Ted. None of us do. Don't give me that. I'll give you what I like, Sunbeam. If you want to behave like a prat, you'll get treated like one. One of a you... A word of advice, Ted. I'm not in the mood. All right. Watch yourself. I want to see you in my office, Michael. You've got some explaining to do. I'll find out. He must be hungry. Fat lot you care. Mrs. Jervis, I can assure you we care a lot. That's why you were brought here in the first place. Now, I've agreed that you can take Dean home with you. I'd like to see you stop me. However, there is a social worker waiting outside to take you home. And I have to tell you that if social services or we have future cause to think that you are incapable of looking after your son, a place of safety order will be obtained. In other words, if you can't stay sober, Dean could be taken away from you. Do you understand? Mrs Jervis? Yes. OK, right then. You're free to go now. Bye-bye, Dean. Bye-bye, Mrs Jervis. Excuse me, Mum. Would this be a good time to discuss Federation business? Yes, Hollis, none better. Oh, good. It's about Robin Frank's compensate relief in new of attendance at court. He is entitled to two days each for the first two days, plus a day and a half for each of the other two, which makes seven days in all, not uh, five and a half as you reckon. The thing is, you see, Robin Frank did come to me himself, so I had no option but to take up the action. I hope that's all right, Mum. Bye.